that was torn between two uh, scriptures to read. Uh, but having said, said uh, having, I asked the Lord to confirm it because I was, I, I was pretty well set to acquire it. And it's like, oh no. And then when Noah asked that question, I think I'm going to go this way and just pray that the Lord will. Uh, John chapter 11, if you would. John chapter 11. <clears throat> They're very familiar to you. Uh, I, I had read a devotion this week uh, from this chapter, and I, there was something in it that I'd never had considered much before. I just want to share that with you. Hopefully it'll be a strength to you. Uh, Noah asked the question, you know, with the Lord, you're not supposed to commit murder. But what happens if, if God is, no, doesn't sin and he, he commits murder? Does he sin? Of course, the scripture tells us in Samuel that the Lord kills and he makes alive. You have to remember, first, first of all, life comes from God in the big first place. He gives to all men life, breath. It all comes from him. It's a gift. And, and sometimes... We can't see the whole picture yet. Like Brother Chris said, we really don't. I go back to what Spurgeon said, if you can't see his hand, trust his heart. There are times when you really don't see the whole picture in there. We're going to look at uh, two women who couldn't see the whole picture in Scripture. They couldn't see the whole picture. They could only see part of it. And by seeing part of it, they made an assumption about the Lord. Um, I don't know if you would say they passed judgment on him, but yet they, they did in a way. They, they uh, thought the Lord was something other than he really is. Have you ever done that? Have you ever kind of thought, maybe in your thoughts you wouldn't say it audibly, but you felt like the Lord was something other than what you've learned all your life, or maybe because of this, uh, of things that are happening, you, you kind of felt like, Oh, there's questions that arise in the mind. And I, and I think oftentimes in trials, we, we have this mindset. So let's look at the scripture and maybe we can see uh, the result of, of uh, you know, it's a blessing that we see the whole picture here. You know it? We're given both sides of it. And why? Why? You know, John said, these things are written that you might believe and believe and you'd have life through his name. So we're, we're, we're reading something right here that was written so we might believe. There's an end to it. There's a purpose for it. Does the Lord, that the Holy Spirit uh, put this in, on, on, down for us to, to read it. So let's pray together. And uh, Father, we ask for your uh, anointing on your word. Lord, that you alone can take this word you, you alone can open our eyes to see it and open our hearts to receive it. Lord, dear Heavenly Father, you only, we, we honor you, we give you the glory, we confess that we have nothing within ourselves, nothing, Lord. We have no understanding, we have no, nothing without you, so we depend upon you to help us. We surrender our feeble minds, we surrender our thoughts, we surrender uh, every question that we have, that we can't see the whole picture. We ask you to help us to wait, wait, and, and learn from this scripture. Please, Lord, open our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now it says, in, and I'm reading out of the New King James Version in chapter 11. Uh, now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. And it was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Now, it's, it's, it's funny, not funny, but interesting to me that, this, that the, the, the Lord inserts this future event to ex help explain this. And I think maybe it'll help us explain why she did what she did. It's that same Mary, okay? Therefore... Now, now, because Lazarus is sick, therefore, because if you, if you would have it in verse 3, if you was to insert, because he was sick, the sisters sent to him saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. 
So there's the purpose immediately. God, Jesus gives it to him. This sickness is not, this just, it didn't take him by surprise. It wasn't not whatsoever. Immediately clarifies to, to and, and, and I, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, this was given audibly to the Lord. I don't know that it was, you know, it could have been a letter. It could have been a messenger sent audibly to say, Mary and Martha sent me to tell you that you, who you love is sick. And Jesus immediately responds, the sickness is not unto death. Maybe it was audibly to those who could hear around it. I, I, I kind of feel like it was. I don't want to read something between the lines that's not there. But it goes on to say in verse 5 to clarify another thing. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Now, that should solve a lot of problems right there. That should answer a lot of questions immediately. Jesus loved them. So, when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. I would like to say you could put because in place of so. I'm not trying to change the word of God. Please don't think. But I, I think it's that. I think it implies that. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And because he loved them so much, he stayed two more days. And I think that's the truth. Because he had a, a plan. The Lord Jesus had a plan. He had, he, number one, he wanted to glorify the Father. Number two, of course, he was going to heal him. And number three, he was going to reveal himself to Mary and Martha in a way that they'd never known before. And number four, he's going to reveal himself to the disciples they'd never known before. So Jesus had four good reasons that I could see for this delay. So before you pass judgment, when, 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 you're, when you're going through a trial or going through a difficult time, and, and you, and, let me just put it this way. If there's something you're going through that only the presence of the Lord can fix, just wait. You, you could say, you, you hurry up, Lord, hurry up, see. And we, we've been there where we need relief or the presence of the Lord or something. We just need something. So uh, Jesus loved him. He heard, so he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. And disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you, and you're going to there again? Jesus answered, are, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in a day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that he said to them, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. So this is the intention. I'm going, and the disciples really can't get it. They don't really understand at the moment, what he, what he, why are you wanting to go back there? And of course, Jesus himself is saying, in my opinion, I have to work. I, I, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. And you, you must walk in this light or you will stumble. You and I, if we don't stumble in the light of Christ, I mean, if we don't walk in his light, we will stumble. We will stumble. We will be offended. We'll be offended. We'll be like John the Baptist. Is this the right Lord? Are you the one? If you are the one, why am I here? You see, and we can ask that question. If you are the Lord that we thought you were, why did you stay two days? Why didn't you come when we needed you the most? You see, these questions could arise. And, just, and the disciples said, well, Lord, if he sleeps, he'll get, he'd be fine. What's the big deal? Why we go to this? He's sleeping. He's just taking a nap. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. He says that to, to get in their minds. He, this is, he's dead. And I wonder if it was just a shock to them. They knew Lazarus. They knew the, the love that the Lord had for this man and his, his two sisters. 
he, the Bible said he went there a lot. And he, they, I wondered if they thought to themselves, what? And Jesus immediately clarifies. Look what he says. I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there. He's dead and I'm glad. I mean, really, that's what he's saying. I'm glad for your sakes, for your sakes, for your sakes. That you may believe. Believe what? Believe what? How many things had they seen up to this point? The water turned to wine. They've seen so many things. They were about to see another aspect of the Lord that just, you know, the, these are the same disciples that said, what kind of man is this that could calm the storm? I was reading where Chuck Swindoll, his grandfather was probably his, when you read Chuck Swindoll's writings, he loved his grandfather <coughs> dearly, dearly. And he would take him on fishing trips and he said, and, and he said we've been in, I've been on, on, in, in sailing vessels that when the storm is so bad, he said, and then I've been on the water where it was like a mirror. He said, and, the, and to, to go from one to the other is absolutely impossible, but not with God. Just immediately drop to a, a slick, they call it, a slick. You ever skied on a slick like that? Oh, boy, you can really scale it back when you're going and there's no waves. I mean, it's just water is so is so so beautiful when it's so smooth and the Lord did that to these disciples they saw that but yet there was a something in the, that Jesus said I've got there's something you 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 don't have it yet and you've got to see this in me you've got to see me do this so you will believe so so let's let's go to him he's dead Jesus said let's go and Thomas, who is uh, call, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let's go that we may die with him. So when Jesus came, he found that he'd already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary was sitting but Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here. Now I want you to ask yourself that question. Is that something that you could ask of anything in your life if you'd have been here? Then you fill in the blank. Or if you would just come. Maybe you're waiting. Lord, if you would just please come. Then my brother would not have died if you'd have been here. I wonder at that moment, I know the Lord knew all things, knows all things, but in, in his humanity, he, he allowed himself to have feelings, hurts, and disappointments. And he, he felt that. He felt that it was no, thank you, Lord, for coming. I'm so glad you're here. If you'd have been here, in other words, you're late. Yeah. You, you, now you come. Now you're here. If you'd have been here when we asked you to come, you see. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give it you. I'm really not sure of that, I'm really not sure of that of that statement. Uh, she she's theologically Martha is pretty sound, I guess you might say. She she knows that God has power. You know, she had to know the scripture. Uh, was there any bringing back from the dead in the old Bible? Sure, Elijah, Elisha, even Elisha's bones. A man hit the bones, he came to life. So there was uh, miracles of that, uh, but not for four days. Except, you, you see, so I don't know, I, I don't know what the doubts were in Martha, even now, whatever. I don't know what she's thinking that the Lord, but here's the thing, what, what really gives me is she says, 
if you ask of God, in other words, I'm not so sure you can do this. Obviously, you didn't make it on time, so maybe if you ask the Father, maybe the Do you see what I'm saying? The diminishing of, 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 of him, maybe if I use the right word, in her eyes, that had to have hurt our Lord. It had to have hurt him to, to her to say, he dearly loved Martha and Mary, and, and his whole motive was for them. His whole motive was for them, and she, she approaches him with that and said, but if you ask the Father, maybe, you know, maybe he'll, he'll answer your prayer or whatever. And Jesus responds, I am. You see, I am. And this is not a, a bragging statement. This is what the father wanted. In him, all fullness should dwell in the son. That's what God wanted in, the, in Jesus. Jesus became a humble servant. He's not saying this in a boasting matter. You've got to get this, Martha. You've got to get this. I am the resurrection and the life. This has to sink in. You see. But he says before then, your brother will rise again. Martha said, well, I know he will on the resurrection day. I know that. <laughs> See, she's theological answer again. Well, I know. Yes. He, I know, I know. <coughs> and then and that's when Jesus said, I am. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. This is an aspect that, I don't know, this is a part of the picture that had never been revealed in, 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 the, in, the, in the, uh, the, the, the manner that it was about to be revealed. See? And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said, yes, Lord, I believe that you're the Christ, the Son of God who's coming to the world. Then she said that. She went away and secretly called Mary. She just walked away. She walks away from the life. All life. He's the source of life. And she walks away. She walks away with knowledge in her head. I, I understand. I understand that. But you still didn't come, and you didn't, you didn't answer my prayer. And when she said these things, she went away and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, The teacher has come and is calling for you. I don't know if when Jesus, when Martha's walking away from him, I, I, imagine, I just imagine the Savior looking at her as she walks away and well, how would you feel? And, and maybe he said, tell, tell Mary to come. Come. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Now, Jesus had not yet come into the town, but he was in the place where Martha met him. And, you know, this is it's so incredible because Jesus did not have to even come. The centurion, well, the one servant who you know, asked for his servant to be healed. You remember that? Jesus said, go your way. And he asked, what time was it? And it was, it was the same time. He knew it. So Jesus, he didn't have to go. He, he didn't have to. Then the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, they followed her saying, she's going to the tomb to weep there. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet and saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Same, same statement. Only she's a little more emotion, it seems like. She falls right down. Mary, to me, between Mary and Martha, she's a little more emotional. Martha's a little more, I don't know, I don't want to say she's hard, but she's a little more 
firm. She gets aggravated. She's a worker. She don't mess around. She's not a weepy kind of person. Does that make sense? I don't think. She's just straight to business. And she's just uh, the way she is. But Mary is a little more tender-hearted, I think, and more, and it really affected her. And she's she she's not angry with the Lord. I think maybe she's disappointed. Maybe she's hurt. And yes. Yeah, because many times he healed them all. In Matthew, they thousands would come. You know, he just healed them. And now here the one, especially we're your friends. <laughs> we, we, you love you. We, you love us. And in fact, the message said, "The man who you love is sick." And this is the treatment we get. You heal strangers you never seen before. And now us, we to get the neglect thing. See, that's what they're thinking. It's so, it's so way off. When, when you look at it from their side, it's way off. What they're saying is so far from the truth. And Jesus knows it. Those words are just like arrows, I think, just fiery arrows in, into him. And so this is what one thing I wanted to say. So therefore, so now, since Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews came with her weeping, who came with, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And this is the spot that I totally disagree with people that said, well, he was sad because Lazarus died. He was not. He was not. He was hurt that they didn't believe. He was, exactly. It's like they were bleeding from faith. They were saying the right words, but... No faith. They weren't really showing that they believed in him. Nothing. No, no adoration, no worship. Here's the Son of God who created the worlds, who gave, who was going to give his life for all of humanity, the resurrection and the life. And everybody is shaking their head and saying, wow, you failed. How could you have done this? How could you treat the people you love like this? You see? And Jesus says, where have you laid him? Come and see. Jesus wept. There's weeping all around him. There's sadness all around him. There's no gladness whatsoever to see him. And the Jews said, oh, see how he loved him. Some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind, oh, could have kept him from dying? See? And Jesus again groaning in himself. Now the word groaning, when you look it up, it means to, it literally says snort with indignation. He's frustrated. You look it up. It literally, he's frustrated. He's, he's almost to the point of angry that there's no faith. You know, he rebuked the disciples before of their unbelief. And I, I'm thinking the whole time, I think the disciples, I, I, I picture them just with their mouth open. They're... We don't know what they're saying. Are they hearing? Are they right there? What? <laughs> they're thinking, what are you going to do? It almost looks like nobody's people. No, Jesus. that's right. And I think at that, uh, one preacher said at that point in his life, there was not one person on the face of the earth that had faith. None. <coughs> None. And the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. There's none. So what do we glean from this? What can we glean from it? 
So, Jesus is groaning in himself. He comes to the tomb, verse 38. It was a cave and a stone lay against it, and Jesus said, take away the stone. Take it away. Martha, here she is with her. Um, she knows, you know, she's got it down pat, seemed like. The sister of him who was dead said, Lord, by this time there, he stinks. There's a stench for he's been dead for four days. Which was true on the human side of things. Jesus said, Martha, or he said to her, didn't I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? And at that moment, maybe, the, maybe a hush went across the crowd. How? How? I don't think so either. Yes. I have not. Yeah. And yet, like you said, even the statement Peter made, well, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And he, the statement, because many said, who is this man? And Jesus uh, said, I'm doing this that God will get glory and for you. This is for you. Now, Mary and Martha, as far as I know, they didn't hear that statement, but the disciples did. All of them heard that. So they're thinking, what's he going to do? He, they're rolling the stone away. Is he going to lay his hands on him? You know, he's, you, you know he touched. You, you, you just wonder what they're speculating in their mind. They took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I wonder if that's the way he put, said it. I thank you, Father, you've heard me. There's no one else heard me, Father, but you have. You've heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. You know, he, even in his humility, he didn't say, they don't believe that I'm God. And they, I need to set them straight. And he did not. In his humility, he's so, the humility of the Lord is so beyond my, my thinking how to never exalt himself in the place that he deserved to be exalted. He deserved at this moment, trust of every person on the face of the earth. He deserved the absolute trust and faith of all humanity, and there was none. Even his closest ones. You, do, you, do you know what it's like if a per people you really love don't believe in, don't trust you, or don't have confidence in you? That hurts. That hurts. You know, you, you, you know, have you ever had this happen? This happened. I've seen it in families. And you ever see when, like I remember, a family member, when they would brag on one and not the other, and the one they didn't brag on did all the work. Does that ever happen? Oh, it does. And it hurts because they get bragged, and they ain't done anything. And you see, I... And that kind of pain, you know, not being recognized. And Jesus just laid that all aside. He just laid that down. And, and, and when he said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. I wish I knew. I wish I, and like one preacher said, the last thing Lazarus probably heard was whispering. He's not here. He didn't come. The next thing he hears is Lazarus, come forth. You know, he's, can you imagine the, I don't know, for four days. Who knows? We could ask him one day, what did you hear? Did it go by just like that? He probably just like woke up and, what, what? Even if he decayed, if he did, it doesn't matter. You know, they say people that are been lost at sea, it doesn't make any difference. When the Lord says, 
the trumpet sounds, whoosh, and DNA proves that, hasn't it? One molecule of DNA proves that. Make another just like us, but it won't. Be, it would be, you know, the same. And he says, "Come forth." And he who had died, make no mistake about it. Everybody knew he was dead. Came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was wrapped with a cloth and Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. I wonder if it just exhausted the Lord. I know when that woman touched him and he you know, healed, it, it, it took virtue out of him. Many of the Jews who had come to Mary had seen the things that Jesus did, believed in him. Some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them the things that Jesus did. Now, I want to jump forward a little bit, and I want to look at, it, maybe, maybe it's the results of this in the life of Mary. I'll try to quickly be fast. In chapter 12, then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus, who, has been, who had been dead, whom he raised from the dead, who Lazarus was. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them who sat at the table with him. I don't blame him. <laughs> Do you? I'd have been right with him, would you? Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard. Now, let me just say this. Why now? And let me just want you to think on this. She looked at him now through eyes that she never had before. And those eyes made her heart say, I'm giving everything I have to him. He deserves everything I have. And she anointed his feet, wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. You know, Jesus could have said, now you believe me, huh? But he didn't. He knew her frailty. He knows our frailty. He knows our, our, our sl slowness to believe but my question is to you after you read this does this motivate you to pour on him all you have you say well he still ain't answering my prayer it don't matter you, you, don't you see a part of Christ that is not over yet it's not done yet don't judge him do not. It's not. He may not have the answer yet. But according to what we see right here, the end is good. The end is good. I, uh, I, I think in myself, if, there, if there's questions that we have not been answered, just wait. 